Mama is busy making bentos for all of us. She made a really nice lunch for me. This is hers. Now she's put a cucumber in the middle. Wow, really, really healthy. Uh -huh. mm, this is what a Japanese wife does. Every her job. Right, Mama? Uh, cucumbers for our neighbor. So I'm at the farm early and about to repeat. Yesterday I didn't film. So today I'm actually going to show you how to how we use this thing. It's a lift. Try to do it hands with one hand. It's kind of cool. It has a remote. But uh, we did basically 20, 20. Oh, no. It's locked. Now this side's locked. What the heck? I'm going to talk to my boss, he's going to guard the truck key. This is a rental, I guess, they uh, guard it. We usually just leave the keys in the truck. That's Japan for you. In America, you leave keys in a truck, that truck's gone. But here in Japan, you can leave keys in a truck. Not to worry about it. So, he's off to uh, plow the field. Now we're rotating Soba in. He's my, my, my teacher. Hey. あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
that they have it actually now grandfathered in because the new licenses they require you to actually have a license so they have done away with this so I'm lucky every little bit of rice counts so we have finished harvesting this field but if you look down here actually this rice is still green so good but you can see here there's some rice here so basically I'm gonna grab this rice here it's right here it's hard to do it with one hand all right use my knife grab it and I keep it like I keep one leg up here and I pinch it so that way my hands are free and I can cut with one hand and with the other so I'm gonna go all the way down here and when I get enough rice I do a bundle so making bundles really easy here's the rice and I grab a weed I wrap it around I tuck it in and I lay it down and when I walk back I'll pick up all the bundles all right let's continue on Woo, that's done now I'm wait for him he actually followed me around it was really nice I didn't have to get up and bring it to him he just walked around and got out and uh, fed the rice every little bit of rice matters uh, if you're if you're a farmer I'm wearing I got one of these micro towels on they do seem to be cool they do warm up you know but they you snap them uh, well snapping really doesn't cool them that's a myth but if you put them in water they seem to stay cool for quite a while so I'm trying to keep the sun off me so I'm wearing it around me like a jihadist. <laughs> My uh, teacher is fixing something. I should go out there and see what he's working on. He's banging on something, bending something back into shape. On there. Some piece. Put it back on the combine. I'm not sure what it is, but obviously, probably with the weeds, it got bent. You know, one thing about Japan is. They use so much of their land. They don't have a lot of it, so they use it for growing food. And you know, and, and everything is small co-ops, unlike the states, which these huge mega farms, uh, which make up something like 99% of all farms are these huge farms. Only about 1% of farms, I think that's right, like one or 2% of farms are actually small farms. And um, what makes the system work in Japan is they have a union called uh, JA, Japan Agriculture. Japan Agriculture ultimately is a union of small farmers, a co-op of small farmers that ultimately lobby and work together collectively and they never allow these large farms to, you know, to basically take control as they have in the States. So um, the opportunity here is actually with the company that I'm, I'm working with and they're helping me and I've got some, what I want to do is incorporate bound ups found up houses, uh, sustainable living, everything else is part of it. Um, and so as we grow the co-op, we can bring in students from around the world to come and learn the uh, small farming Japanese agricultural system here as part of our found up system in partnership with um, um, you know, the co-op that I'm working with. And, uh, and even take it to that next stage, the vision of found up houses where you make things and you create products that then we sell and distribute locally um, and all these things are happening and these are things I've been talking about for years and years and years but what I lack is, is always funding and what I lack is a partner so establishing the partner here is, is a good step forward um, and in order for me to kind of understand the system I've got to throw myself into the system and that's why I'm here working uh, on you know with, uh, with uh, the, the, the co-op that I'm working with here so it's a great learning you know, uh, experience for me and I hope then as I bring other people on, I can be their teacher and teach them how to use this system that then can be dupl duplicated around the world and other places like where you are. Now this is a Japanese farmer right here. It's how they wear, the old man, they wear a white thing around the head and they tie around the bottom. And uh, it's to keep the sun and everything off their, off their body. So that's what I'm doing. Let me zip this up. What a look. <laughs> it's a busy highway here, lots of trucks. And here I am following, and I put my emergency lights on. Oh, I mean, I never see him doing it. Here he goes. He's got to cut across the middle here. Wow, it's a small. Oh, there's a car there. I don't want to go anywhere.
I just went and made the guy break. He's probably not too happy. <laughs> Screw him. Here he is going in the field. And he lowers and he just starts cutting as he goes in. You can see how this field has no weeds, but our field has tons of weeds. And I really think that it has to do with the amount of water because we did not put a lot of water into it. So then he's, he does a little archway in. So he's going to leave, I know what he's going to do, he's going to leave four lanes. I've seen him do this before, this is kind of an advanced cutting system, right? So he's leaving us four lanes right there, right there, and he's going to come back that way. And I'm going to do a little different here, I'm actually going to, I'm going to What you gonna do is leave the basket on the truck here since it's a small tumble and not even have to use the crane and then I'll move it and relocate it later. So there he is coming back, his four cut there. I've got the bag set up here. I think you should be able to reach here. And that will save us having to load it since it's such a small field. If you do it right, you should end up with a perfect last cut, which is exactly the width of your combine, like he has done right here. So you can see he's in the whole field, and I've got some stacks of rice on the side there. And we've gotten probably about 700 kilos in the first bag, I don't know what we'll get on the second one here. And I just noticed a family of storks, I think they're not storks, but um, egrets, and they will eat all the um, they're the parents in the back. The darker ones, these white ones here, the three young ones are the young ones. So they're, uh, look, he's about to get up. Yep, he just got himself a frog. And they're just going to eat all the frogs. There's tons of frogs on here. Now that it's been cut, they can just move along and uh, get them all. So I've been picking up the rice and I want to show you how to use this uh, uh, lift. Right. In the clutch, there's something with the PTO. You press down the clutch and pull out the PTO. Now this gives the, I don't know what PTO stands for, maybe someone could put it in comments, but that puts the power in the machine. It basically, I think it changes the gear in the truck. So there's the PTO, and all you do is you pull in the clutch and pull out the PTO, which I've already done. Next thing you want to do is actually put out the, the levers, and all you do is you unlock this. There's a little thing, pull it out and uh, set it and it locks in place. Now there's two of them, but because I'm lifting all on one side, I don't worry about the others. Then you basically push these two levers down and it puts the piston down that easy. And then you got the controls, right, for moving. This brings the crane, as you can see up there, on there. So I'm gonna load this rice right here. Cool thing, it's got a little controller here that works it so I can bring down the crane with simply the trigger so you press the trigger's power and press the button you can see the trigger comes down I want to bring this around so we swing the boom around so it's over a little more and I want to lift up. I want to be over it. And because I'm going to be lifting it up higher, I want to get this boom out. Because I got to bring it all the way back here where I'm at. All right, so the boom's all the way out. Now I can lower the. Sometimes on the back here, I can't see the... All right, got attached. 
I always wanted to swing up out from the truck. So if I lift up here, it should pull out from the truck. See it? Pull outs from the truck. Now I want to lift it up so it's above this rail here. That's good. Now I want to have it so it's just nearly top because I can use these uh, tops of the bags to break if it starts to swing wildly. So this is what you got to be careful when you bring it around. Bring it around, see it's going to swing. But see, I'm using the bags here, and I can I can lift up a little bit. boom down. Make sure I got room here. All right, we'll lift it all the way up high. Because when I bring the boom down, it's a lock up there. You see the lock? Now when I bring the boom down, see, it's going to bring it right down. Now it's kind of in the middle there. See, I'm right, right here. So I need this over a little bit. We'll put on this right side. And I can bring the boom in. If I bring the boom in, bring it nice and tight. Make sure I'm not on anything. Now I got space there, right? So what I want to do is lift it up. I want to swing it out. Oh, all the wrong way. Okay. And I can bring the boom in. That's good. I got enough room for here for one more. Fit in here. All right, let's move to the next field. He's already cutting over there. Hey, and you always, you always want to bring it back to uh, the final location, which is in the middle. Alright, so I'm going to put these in. So first what I'm going to do is lift this up. Okay, those are up. Squeeze the trigger. Watch your fingers. Lock it here. Because of the bags, I've got it slightly up. I had it down, but the, I want that crane to stay tight. Um, what you can do is you can bring it in here. This one here on top, actually will lock it. You don't want that thing flying around. Ah, it's locked. Okay, it's good to go. Woo, hot day. And uh, now that you're in the truck and the air conditioning, woo. Clutch goes in, push the PTO, that's it. And now you're ready to drive. Now I can put it in gear. You know, these poles here, the old drying racks. These are how they used to dry the rice. They would just have put the poles across it and they would just lay the rice all the way down and this entire rice field probably would have been dried on it. Uh, this is actually really hard to do, but he had this, this back, he's got this back one locked with a rope on both sides, pulling on this side, this end one, stop it from sliding around. <laughs> really masters of, farmers are really masters of rope work. Hopefully it's gonna go. We're gonna go to the ocean now. We finished all the ones here. And now, is he cutting? I feel like walking around and cutting too 
too hot. It's 33 degrees Celsius.